All right, good morning. So we are trying to use this new system. It's a little bit fuzzy. Um, I hope it does not disappoint us today. Um, yeah, so audience, I hope you guys can see us clear. I see you fuzzy on my own part. I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, but either way, let's give it a try and see. Oh, actually it became clear. It's clearer now, nice, awesome. Okay, so don't be surprised if we have to switch back to our old system. This is something new that we're trying with Zoom uh, in order to limit the interference. So thank you guys so much for joining us once again. My name is Mona Chimso Aga. I reside in Houston area. I'm in Texas. Surprised if we have to sisters here with me uh, who are going to introduce themselves before we introduce our wonderful um contributor today. So sisters, please go ahead. Good morning, everybody. My name is Augusta Nosuke. I reside here in Richmond, Texas. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Good morning, um, viewers. My name is Equitas uh, Simon Okube. Today, I uh, want to give you the objective to make you understand what we're doing today. Um, the main thing we want to take up from today's um, show is to understand that LNC's uh, propositions, templates, roadmap is a product of clearly thought out processes guided by principles of democracy and people's rights. That's what we want you to take away from today's show. And therefore, we want to appeal to the conscience of our internal slave masters, those denying this in denying us and delaying this independence project. Because of what they're getting, some are receiving 4,000 pounds, some 3,000 pounds of our people's blood. It is time to have a change of heart. Another group is the political class, the traditional rulers. Does it not matter to you that we are about to perish? Please go and learn a trade, acquire a new skill, so that you can get, get, get some employment like any other. Remember, we will not appeal to you forever. Time is running out. Our life is in danger. Stop what you're doing. Get gainfully employed, employed so that we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for that disclaimer. So. Uh, of course, you, as you guys can see, we have a wonderful guest today, Mr. Mark Olisa. Olisa, I'm, excuse me. So as we prepare for the activation of the Constitutional Force Major, uh, as we continue the process today, our uh, host, Mr. Uh, Olisa, the, the Olise, the Director of Public Communication, uh, Lower Niger Congress, will help us to illustrate the sovereignty questions emanating from the constitutional grievances fueling the agitation across that land called Nigeria for which a remediation action has become very, very imperative. So I will have my sister AP give us a proper introduction of our brother who is here to enlighten us about the issues pertaining to our struggle today, sister. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Marco Lise is a graduate of chemistry from the University of Benin. His credentials of self-determination um, of is the credentials in the self-determination sphere of political activism include crucial roles in organizations like the Niger Delta People's Salvation Front and its forerunner, Niger Delta People's Volunteer Force, as well as various people's emancipation processes, such as Student Unionism, PRONACO, and MNN. He is a founding member of Lower Niger Congress, a respected voice on the issues of self-determination, both in immediate Lower Niger and on the national stage. Mr. Marco Lisa, you're welcome. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Good morning, my sisters. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. My pleasure of being uh, in your program, uh, which will give it my best. Mr. Olive, do you, 
let's try without the earpiece so that we can get a clearer uh, voice. For some reason, it's muffled when you're talking. So, I can hear you, but it's not making sense. It's very muffled. So I'm thinking maybe without the earpiece, this earpiece can be a uh, uh, danger itself. So try it without the earpiece. Let's take your earpiece out. Like remove it from the device and use it directly. Use the voice directly on the device and see. Is it clear down with the earpiece? Sounds like like a horror movie coming out from the grave. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. It's like ooh, 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 ooh. so. Do you want to change position? Do you do you mind changing position maybe because I know with Wi-Fi sometimes you get it better in some area than others. If we can get a clearer voice. Okay. Maybe maybe you should put me off in a bit and let me move away from you. Okay. So what we can do, audience, we have a 20 minutes video anyway that we need to play. So we can start off with that while he tried to sort out this voice issue. Um, sorry about that. This is uh, not what we intended that will happen today, but of course, uh, the country called Nigeria don't have any stability in anything. So we're going to play this interview he had. All works of life and ethnicity, Ethnic groupings appears to believe that the current Nigeria's federal structure needs restructuring. It is not uncommon to hear that Nigeria will never move forward or develop if restructuring of the federation uh, does not take effect. Some even say that breakup of Nigeria is imminent unless restructuring takes place. The curious thing about the clamor for restructuring of Nigeria is that none of the advocates have clearly detailed what they want to see Nigeria look like. This continued clamor for restructuring began with a call for true federalism that will devolve power to the states. Devolution of power was one of the amended items in the 1999 constitution earmarked for voting in the two chambers of the National Assembly, the Senate and the House of Representatives. But the Senate in its voting exercise jettisoned the bill Members of the House follow suit in a similar exercise conducted. The questions now are, was the National Assembly right to have voted against the devolution of powers? Why the renewed call for restructuring? What do Nigerians understand with the term restructuring? How can agitations from different quarters be resolved? We have joining me in the studio a strategist and deputy communications director for a group known as the Lower Niger Congress, Mark Olise. Mark, welcome to the program. Thank you, my brother. And good afternoon, Nigeria. So and uh, everybody listening and watching. Now let's take some reports from our correspondents and other experts on the issue. <laughs> Thirty-three sections of the constitutions were presented before the Senate and the House of Representatives. The votings in both chambers were prefaced by internal lobbying. Most relevant in the exercise is the issue which concerns restructuring. In particular, is the issue of the devolution of powers, which was rejected in both chambers. Analysts and political commentators see the rejection as turning the deaf ears to popular opinion and by extension postponing the evil days. I cannot stand here and celebrate the amendments 
But the other reason why we've ended up with this kind of amendment is the, that you can actually question the legitimacy of what happened. You don't amend the constitution on the slide. This issue of uh, uh, devolution of powers, they shouldn't have play with it. They must have been, it's a lot of sensitization. And it is very painful. It's very painful because we are at a point where many people are crying for restructuring. The voting pattern appeared to have played one whole region against the other. These legislators believe the Northern Agenda was played out, defined the agreement during the lobbying. Many of them don't understand exactly the, the meaning of the, the word devolution. The they don't understand. And if you look at the amendment, look at just read down the whole thing. Now, almost many of us are shocked. But there were caucus as met. And I agree, look, oh, number this, number this, number this, we must vote them down. We don't want them. What is the reason? No reason. Everybody in this Senate, or indeed in the National Assembly, is accountable to somebody. And we are accountable to our constituencies or senatorial districts, as the case may be. So no matter how hard someone clamors, at least there is a convergence of clamoring between his clamor and the clamor of my people, I will vote on the side of my people, what my people want. The renewed tensions among agitators and the emergence of new groups such as Yoruba Liberation Command and the Niger Delta Revolutionary Crusaders are said to be part of the consequences of the action of the lawmakers. It's creating more harm than good. I don't know whether after the, have you seen that the agitation is still on? Nigerians deserve a better say in this constitutional amendment process than the National Assembly has been willing to accord to Nigerians. And they must understand that they are there at the instigation and behest of, and for the interests of Nigerians. And right now they're selling themselves. The lawmakers say all hope is not totally lost as the bills can still be represented. The amendment by the National Assembly will travel round all the state houses of assembly and each clause requires the two-third majority to go through. The program is people politics and power. And like I did say, my guest is Mark Olisa. He's a strategist and deputy communications director for a group known as Lower Niger Congress. What is Lower Niger Congress? Lower Niger Congress, um, mm. LNC, is a platform, or put it this other way, a coalition of uh, groups and individuals that have been working on resolving the sovereignty questions in Nigeria, you know, that have been working around issues of self-determination and freedom for the people, you know, from the area known as the Niger Delta region to the uh, Eastern Heartland. Okay, so you are working with all these uh, interest groups working for self-determination. Yes, working for self-determination and a restoration of sovereignty to the people in accordance with the universal principle, which the 1999 Constitution acknowledged, even when it lied at the beginning that the Constitution was formed by the people. It acknowledged later that sovereignty resides in the people from which government you know, mm -hmm. uh, derives his authority. You know, that is a universal principle all over the world. In fact, it is the bedrock of democracy, that sovereignty resides in the people. But in 1967, the military regime, you know, and the political, political hegemony of that period usurped the sovereignty of the people, dissolved the structure that were negotiated under the principles of self-determination prior to independence, dissolved those structures, and unilaterally set up a 12-state structure. Subsequently made it 19, and so on and so forth. Today we have 36, you know. But what we actually have is a unitary, you know, country, which they call One Nigeria a unitary country that have taken over people's land and resources as you sub their sovereignty and detest to them, including even telling them the way they will be run by detecting a constitution, the 1999 constitution. And beyond that, you know, even going further to arrogate themselves the power to even, you know, amend those constitution and claim that amending it is going to reflect our will. You know, the questions being raised on the streets and by the people and by the self damnation group and the various nationalities, including the indigenous peoples, in the, that find themselves within the contraption of Nigeria today, the questions being raised are sovereignty questions. They are not questions of, uh, you know, um, the magnanimity of the political class 
or an expression of, uh, of uh, whether you like it, any form of Father Christmas dishing out of gift. It is about them coming into the arena of politics and taking over their destiny. There are two ways by which people can come into the arena of politics. One is by revolution, and the other is by bloodless process that the world has modified to call a referendum. It is why you see before anybody joins EU, the country conducts a referendum. Before a major policy change happens at the EU, the various countries will conduct a referendum to decide whether they accept or not. If you want to leave EU, you conduct a referendum. But in Nigeria, since these people declared the state of emergency in 1967, they have excluded the people totally from the process of determining the ground, the ground norm, the, 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 of expressing their right to self-determination, of determining their sovereignty, which is a principle in international law. Modern international law recognizes self-determination as you know uh, the process by which people determine their sovereignty, determine their existence, and determine their political whatever political union they can be part, become part of without interference from people outside that circle. That is what the Yoruba National Assembly you know just expressed recently. It is what you know Masob has been expressing. It is what OPC has been expressing. And perhaps the 12 states that declare Sharia, who were the, you know, the first to vociferously reject the 1999 constitution by declaring Sharia law in their territory. These are the things they are, they are, they are expressing, their right to self-determination. Now, your, 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 the way uh, people are not allowed to self-determine their oppressions or the, the kind of regard we are not longer giving to sovereignty of the people. Do I call that your own idea of restructuring? Well, it's not my own idea of restructuring. It is the general principle. In fact, it's the basic principle of how modern societies, you know, modern democratic societies are organized. And that is the basis of the original clamor for restructuring of the Federation. By, the, by that original clamor, they are saying that there should be a return to the constitutional order that was negotiated on the basis of self-determination prior to independence. If you remember, Zeke and other people met in the East in 1947 or was it 1948, and said that the minimum requirement under which they will go into independence with the rest of Nigeria yeah. was self-determination. Uh, Sir Amadou Bello said it expressly. I saw the video of that, the, uh, that of Zeke, I read it. Amadou Bello's own was, a, was in a video. He said that they are deciding that they are not ready for independence before 1960. And that they are, they are expressing that in accordance with their right to self-determination. He used that word. It's not a new, you know, I was interacting with somebody recently. I was saying that people are bandishing slogans and the rest as if it's a new word. Self-determination has been there. In fact, this, the independence of Nigeria was fought and won on the basis of that inter modern international principle of the right to self-determination by all the key players, Awolo, Zik, Amadou Belo, Tafoa Balewa, uh, uh, Abat Makoli, the father of them all. It was on the basis of the right to self-determination that the various regions you know, came into agreement, agreement that they were going to you know, federate. In fact, the Middle Belt, in expression of their own right to self-determination, said they were not even going to go into one north uh, region, one northern region with the core north, unless the core north compromised on Sharia. Mm. That they would not be in the same, you know, that's why the core north had to compromise on Sharia. Sharia was put on the table, it was compromised for there to be a one north, only for these same people to turn back, you know, uh, recently to declare Sharia in their zones, Contrary to the, the agreement, agreement reached before independence. So what people are, what people mean by restructuring is a return to the constitutional order that recognized the, the, the federating units that struggled for independence, that recognized the uh, constitution that those federating units developed. All right. Um, Mark, yes. since you are um, um, an important person in LNC, uh, that's Lower Niger Congress. Yeah. I think we will we will set aside uh, almost a better part of this program today di discussing self determination. Uh, but then I want to know from you, break it down for us. What exactly is self determination? Are we talking in terms of leadership, resource control, or what? Self determination 
I will have to reiterate, you know, that self-determination is a modern principle, you know, a principle in modern international law that recognizes the rights of peoples, that recognizes the right of peoples to determine, you know, for themselves the way they want to be governed, which means to make a constitution for themselves, to determine their sovereignty, which includes determining political unions that they want to be, to be part of. That also recognizes the right that they cannot be forced to be part of any political union. But when you hear about people telling you that the unity of Nigeria is non-negotiable, it's a confirmation that the people were conquered and are in bondage. So it's negotiable. It's, everything is negotiable. The people can only be part of a union by consent, by choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is why the opening paragraph of all constitutions say that we, the people, decide to make for ourselves the following constitution. Because it is sovereignty resides in them, it's a universal principle. So that is self-determination. Without inter and when the people are exercising that, you know, right, it is without interference from fact from forces that are not part of the people in question that are exercising their right to self-determination. Can we therefore move forward if people high up there in government are saying that Nigeria's unity is not negotiable? And some eminent personalities, including Walisho and Prof, are saying it is negotiable. Are we not in trouble? We are not in trouble. Walisho and has only just appreciated the fact that the United Nations, you know, even reiterated, apart from the UN Charter that recognized self determination many decades ago, recently in 2007, the United Nations General Assembly endorsed the rights of indigenous people to self-determination and spelt out details of what that right entails and how it can be expressed. Wole Sheika, as a man of knowledge, has just expressed the fact, unlike you know, individuals that parade themselves as professors of constitutional law and constitutional lawyers, senior advocates and the rest, who still continue to defend the 1999 constitution as if it doesn't matter the source, it doesn't matter that it's a forged document by claiming that the people made it and it has been shown that the people didn't make it in a suit that was filed on behalf of uh, Antonio Naro, Wale Shoenka, Bishop Bonigi, uh, Dokubo Asari, Raf Wazurike, and a couple of others, uh, like Yerima Shetima, who just gave that ultimatum. Yeah, for, he was part of the signatory to the lawsuit that was filed on their behalf by the uh, Secretary General of the Lower Niger Congress, uh, Tony Nadi. You know, it is it is it is clear what the situation is, but some people still want to continue to enjoy the loot from the annexation of all the sovereignties of our people by the by the Nigerian state and the, and the hegemony that you know perpetrated that in 1967 and are still in control today. You see them gathered as council of state or gather under whatever toga. They are still in control today, the same people that usurp our sovereignty, the same people that prosecuted the war of genocide, the same people who, after the war, said no victor, no vanquish, carried on as if you know there was a booty of the world that had to be shared. And they distributed oil blocks to themselves. Today, these people, folk cannot probe them or investigate into their wealth. But these people are richer than those they call richest people in Africa. I can tell you that the loot of these people will make the likes of Dangota, Dangote look wretched. Even uh, uh, Abacha's uh, family said that recently, that no matter how rich Dangote is, his wealth will still be, you know, like wretchedness compared to theirs. Mm. All right, you have been talking about referendum. Are you, don't you think, can't the National Conference or Soviet National Conference or whatever take care of referendum? A civil national conference. Mm. Of course, uh, a sovereign national conference was the vehicle, you know, that was canvassed over, over the years through which all of these sovereignty questions can be, you know, uh, resolved. Yes. But unfortunately, you know, the, those who benefit from this mediocre system, from this master-servant uh, relationship or master-servant constitutional order, from this apartheid-like constitution, 
have stood their ground and resisted, you know, uh, 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 you know, the attempts to convoke that con uh, con uh, conference. conference. In fact, it was a major demand by Nadeko. Nadeko included all the forces, you know, that wanted the restoration of sovereignty and true democracy in the country. It was a demand that before the country goes into transition in 1998-99, that that sovereign national conference should hold. It was the, the idea was to make sure that power truly returns back to the people, and the people now decide their constitutional order, determine who gets what and what, uh, uh, set up rules that will make sure that you know even the president of the country can be investigated for crimes, including corruption. Unlike what they have today, that they are above, there are certain people well, that have been spelled out to above the law. Yes. The FC, FI, FCID cannot dare go and investigate Mr. President. That is not a democratic country. It's not a free country. They cannot, uh, EFCC cannot investigate Mr. President. That's not a free country. Rather, they wait for detention from these forces to go ahead and do their investigation. They are because rather than becoming an instrument for crime control, prevention, and investigation, they are now vehicles for you know uh, policing and preventing the people from expressing their sovereignty. Only recently, I heard that the tear gas and shot uh, uh, an elderly Nigerian. Uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie yeah. Boy Oputa, you know that is what that is the, the the function that they now serve because of you know the fact that Nigeria is a police state. Nigeria is an occupation state. I know, and I would like to use this medium to put the word on notice that you know based on the rejection of the current constitutional order in the country by prominent groups and and nationalities that are currently within the control of Nigeria. Even institutions. Yes, and institutions, such as the Yoruba National Assembly, OPC, World Igbo Congress, Oanese Indigbo, uh, Middle Belt uh, Forum, Arewa Consultative uh, Forum, including the Arewa Consultative Youth Forum, and so on. On the basis of the rejection of the current constitutional order, it means that Nigeria, as presently constituted, is a fraud. It means that Nigeria, as presently considered, is a rogue state. And what are the implications for the world? The implication is that Nigeria has left a lot of spaces in the country ungoverned and contested and challenged by several forces, positive and negative forces, such as you can see your Sambisa forest and several places in the Northeast. You can see that the creeks of the Niger Delta, even the you know Nigeria uh, Marine uh, Forces, can't even claim to police there effectively. You know, so what are the implications for the world? With so many ungoverned territories, there is room for anarchy. There's room for terrorism. You know, and the refugee problem that Nigeria is contributing, you will be shocked that it's more than what Syria is contributing currently. So just imagine when it fully leads to a breakdown. If the world, the United Nations Security Council, doesn't come together today to help in this smooth transition from a union that has collapsed irreparably to one that you know, will ensure order and peace you know, for the world. This is the most populous uh, part of, the, of, of Black Africa. Okay. Can, you, can you use this forum to actually spell out what are the functions of the United States Security Council in the present affairs situation of Nigeria? The United Nations Security Council, mm. you know, accept aside an agenda for itself to fight you know terrorism you have counter terrorism you are they have anti terrorism programs they have counter terrorism programs you know and they also have a, a program on promotion of uh, democracy one there's no democracy down here even when we profess to be one they have to come down on that is part of their function there, there is also the counter-terrorism and anti-terrorism. The fact that Nigeria has so many ungoverned spaces because of the collapse of the state structure, being an occupation state. We are posing a threat, security and terrorism threat to the world. You know about the Christmas Day bomber. You know Boko Haram operating in several territory around the, the Chad Basin. You know how much of the terrorists have been exported from here to Somalia, and as we go from, get from the news and other Qaeda zones, including uh, Arab area, Syria, you know, Iraq, Libya. So the world should treat the case of Nigeria from the security perspective that they have to come down and discuss with the various people 
the various people that are expressing their right to self donation they have to come down and discuss with them and I'll allow them to, or through under uh, via a, an orderly process assist them to transit to a new constitutional order that would, would be devoid of rancor and anarchy mm. all right so uh, this is all right we'll continue later on but i wanted to see if i can bring my brother in uh, i think he tried to log off mr olisa were you able to let's see let me let me unmute him so he can try to get back in mr olisa can you hear me can you hear me okay so i don't know we can hear you you have to unmute yourself okay so i think we may have to call him on the phone since this video is acting crazy it's not working out we may have to call him on the phone so that he can um talk that way versus doing the video the audio uh, we use the audio version Mr. Olise. Okay. To say, okay, are you calling him? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, audience. We, we did not plan for this to happen. Okay, so I'm removing him, hopefully. Tell him to try to log in again. Let's see if he will be better. If not, then we'll just do audio so that we are not delaying the um, conversation. Right. So, is he trying to log back in? Okay. Yeah. We we can we just wow. Um, I don't see him in yet. So um, hopefully he will come back in and so he can finish up this conversation, maybe. Um, yes, he's trying to log back in. He had to change location to see if he could get better reception. So he's- He's coming back in, okay. Yeah. yeah that's fine. So the video we were watching was a video, it was an interview that he did in uh, 2017. And so when we tell you guys that our brothers and sisters have been working to get this thing done, they said that, you know, some noise making, uh, I don't know, charade somewhere had us all confused. Instead of focusing on what they were doing, we were focusing on things that will not get us anywhere, thinking that if we break down on Facebook and cry enough and post all the gory pictures that people will come to our aid, Whereas these people have set an international uh, guidelines that we must follow in order to get to our destination and get where we're going. So it's up to us now to pick up this information and start running with it. You know, if you are a first time viewer, this is an opportunity to share this video. Uh, thank God we have ones that you can look into for people to begin to start looking into how the processes work. We went as far as looking at the uh, UN international, uh, the people's right. Yeah. 
quickly because we are thinking, we are giving information that this was done the other way. But when we actually sat down and started doing our research, we realized that it wasn't the yelling and the crying and the outburst that would get us where we're going to, that they, what they want you to do is to use this. If you want them to consider you a human being and put, say, have a spot on the decision-making table for you, you have to use your uh, thinking faculty. So we did that. We went through the process, realized that our brothers uh, uh, have been working to use international uh, guidelines, you know, getting involved the international communities using the guidelines that they have set in terms of what we need to do to get where we're going. So please, you know, this is not LNC's work alone. It's up to us now to be educated consumers, for us to run in there, look at information, start, thank God for Google. I don't care anything anybody says. Google is the greatest thing on the face of the universe because you can be in your bedroom, in your toilet, and just Google some information. So when we start to understand that power belongs to us, that we are the people, not some random written paper by someone, and begin to receive that in our brain. It will empower us because right now we are powerless because we think someone somehow, someplace is gonna do it versus I am gonna do it. No one that Kennedy told his uh, uh, countrymen, uh, uh, you, uh, his, yeah, yeah, his fellow citizen, he said, you know, it's not what your country can do for you, it's what can you do for your country? What can you do to get this self-determination that we are looking for? Because when we get it and set it up a place like the United States where people have equal rights, my goodness, what else are we asking for? So this is something what dying for, this is something what working hard for, this is something what giving your best for, that we need to do the get, get in sync with this process so that it can end sooner. Because the earlier that people are confused about what is being done, running around, pulling backwards, thinking they can pray and fast for 1500 years and listen to some random outburst, it's not gonna get you anywhere. We are educated for God's sake. Everywhere we go, they say that we're most educated. Can we use that education to do something for our people? We were not sent to America. For me and my family, I keep teaching my children. I said, I feel like we were sent down here for a time like this. For a time like this, for us to be part of this restoration project. So the questions some of us should be asking ourselves, especially those in diaspora, what were you? How did you find yourself there? What is your mission? What is your purpose in life? Is your purpose in life to work 12 jobs and work double shift and build mansion that somebody is gonna blow up whenever they feel like, or save all your money, take your retirement to start business. One full and will come and make policy, your business will go yum, you'll be done with. So don't you think it's better that we start working together now for the betterment of our whole community, just like other people do, that's why they progress. When we start thinking about a wholesomeness, the whole community, everyone else, it makes things better than me, myself, and I. Oh, if, if I can get the money and buy a house in Dubai and London and send my children overseas, all is well. All is not well when your neighbors are still begging you for food. All is not well when your neighbor's children cannot go to school. All is not well when all we get every day is killings in, in Southern Kaduna. And some people think like, oh, it's their turn. No, it's not. It's not. We cannot allow that in good conscience to happen. We cannot. We have passed that stage now. This is not a time for revenge. This is the time for us to come together and fight a common enemy. And we know who the common enemy, uh, uh, enemy is. They are not hiding themselves. They are out there telling us how they are coming to deal with us, the infidels. So what is stopping us from learning the processes, looking at the information, going there and gathering the information versus everybody just talking at random? Hmm? As we are speaking, the lives of our children are in danger. Someone, can you try reconnecting him? Yes, he's not in yet. He has not. He says that um, the Zoom was telling him that he was removed by the um, the host. So I did. Oh, you have to be added by you. Great. Um, I don't even know how to add him by the by removing. That's interesting. Okay, so let's call him. Let him. Let's call him on uh, WhatsApp, please, because I have never tried to add somebody else that I remove. I'm not even sure where to go to do that. <laughs> when you remove someone, I thought he can come back in. Um, right. Let me see yeah, for this one. Invite. Maybe okay. It says I can invite him. Yeah, maybe send him a link. 
Yeah, choose contact, choose from the list, patient by list, okay. Okay, so let me, since maybe I'll put it on our thing and you can send it to him because I don't have his information. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I'm sending him that now, oh, guys. We are not giving up. There's no. No, no, we are not giving up on anything at all. We have to, we, it must be done right. We have to fight for our brothers and sisters, whatever they, anywhere they clean any brown person, they are killing us. Okay, so I sent it to you so he can um, use that to join and see if that works for him. Right, so as I was saying before, um, working together. So I welcome our uh, brothers and sisters from uh, Southern Kaduna. You know, uh, we want you guys to know that we are with you guys and what has been going on. Our hearts bleed for, for our brothers and sisters. It, it keeps us up at night knowing that someone can go to bed and not, or even you, someone thinking I, I can go to bed and not make it the next day. So that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a nation where our children will we be right now, they should be signing up to go and participate in international committee uh, platform on any kind of or research or invention or whatever, or contest. You know, that's what we're looking for, not children that are selling bananas on the road and people are molesting them. So we want better for all of our children, all of our children. And we want to emphasize that, that when your heart bleeds, our heart bleeds. So please let's rise up, let's hold hands like brothers and sisters that we are and march on to get this sovereignty that we are looking for and stop waiting for someone somehow, some falling from the sky to come and do it for us, nobody. So if not for anything today, let this brain reset and say that power, that I have the power to make the change that I want, that I have the power to make the change that I want. And sometimes it's not always easy for you to just do it on your own. And that's why you have to collaborate with your brothers and sisters to make some things happen. Is he trying? As you can see, the devil is fighting hard for this not to happen today. Our brother has uh, some looted information and we are dealing with connection issue this morning. So yeah, so if you don't have Zoom, this is a good time to download your Zoom and get ready for your contribution because we want to hear from our brothers and sisters all over. We are in this together. We must get this done. You know, the alliance, the alliance that we are looking for is here. So let's fortify it. Let's share it. If there's any confusion about what is going on and how it's to be done, you can always reach us. We have our phone number uh, on the website there uh, as well. And there are so many videos. So if you follow LNC, you can see many of their multiple videos that they posted throughout the years on, um, uh, oh, is his name Ugochi? Somebody is logging in with Ugochi before I go and bring somebody else here. <laughs> huh? I don't know if Ugochi is a viewer or did he try to use a phone with Ugochi's name? So he says he's getting the same response. Okay. Just call him on WhatsApp. Call okay. On WhatsApp. Okay. So which is here, listener? Which is not time to contribute yet. We have a host here, a guest. I'm sorry that we are um, trying to connect with this morning, and for some reason, um, his audio is not that great. Um, so it's if we just call him on audio and put him on audio, so we can get going. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Um, Hello. Yeah, Mr. I was I can't connect because I was by the host. Okay, we're connecting you um to so maybe she tried to reconnect me or something. She tried, but she cannot um handle that. Um they have him on audio. Let me look up to see how I can bring him back on video if possible. Because his voice is clear on audio. Um,
What's going on? Yeah, I, I'll try to explain to him. You said? You would. Yeah, so have him on audio. I'm gonna try, I've seen how to do it. I have to go through the process here. I hope he doesn't turn this thing off. Um, I can add him. Okay. Are you going to do it almost immediately? Because so he'll know which one to do, the WhatsApp no, or Zoom. Audio so he can introduce himself, he can keep talking. Why you, because you know, like these things, he has to move out from. Oh, he it, had to change. It's okay. like same phone, what do we do? Leave it on audio, let's be consistent. Leave it on audio, that's fine. Yeah, leave it on audio. I mean, they've seen his videos, so they, they know who he's talking. So he's the same guy, our people, the same brother that is coming back to um, give us his insight. So is he on? I'm trying to get him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's do audio alone. He's not answering. It's back again. Okay, Mr. Lise, just hang on, please. You are live. Mr. Lise. Yeah, hello. Yeah, just hang on. Just listen. Um to throw the question and you begin to answer, please. Is that okay? You're live now. Your voice is coming out. Okay. Can you hear him? Yes. Yeah, I can hear him. Okay, please. Um. Right. So, Miss Olisa, we just finished playing the interview that you had uh, in 2017. I'm not sure what the guy's name. Uh, describing some of the things that is, you know, uh, happening uh, back home. So going by the perspective, perspective that we've seen in this video uh, that we just watched about four years ago, uh, looking at where things in Nigeria uh, is presently, especially the, the gross deterioration of security situation across Nigeria and the escalation of self-determination agitation from all region of Nigeria. Can you please tell our audience uh, on the connection between the disputed constitutional arrangements which you spoke about in the interview and this self-determination agitations that seems to be heading to a dangerous threshold of self-help. Can you, did you hear me? Oh. Is it still on? Okay. Hello. Elk, is he still on? Wow, this thing here is not going as planned today. This is awful. Sister Augusta, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Okay. So why is he back on mute while I was talking? Did he, is he clear on? Okay, can you hear him? Can you hear him, please? I was hearing him earlier. What happened? Can you hear him? Can you hear him? Oh. Yes. Should I repeat the question? Yes, he wants to you to repeat the question. Yeah, please. 
Okay, sorry about that. Um, um, great. All right, so I was saying earlier, we just watched a clip, it's about 22 minutes of worth of clip that we watch uh, on the interview that she gave uh, back in 2017, I think. So we are saying if you can please enlighten our audience on the connection between the disputed constitutional arrangements, which you spoke about in that interview, and this self-determination agitation group that seems to be heading to a dangerous threshold of self-help. Can you put some more uh, light on that, please? Well, the, the constitution is the run on, is is the expression of the people's uh, will, the people's desire to form a union, a political union. You know, I, with people that they have something in common prior to the independence of this country. Portions that led to you know, the one that uh, provided for self government and the subsequent uh, one that uh, provided for independence through uh, the one for the Republican Constitution. You know, this is a product of a uh, negotiation. And, uh, it is on the basis of that that the various uh, political units, you know, were formed by the people from those parts, eastern region, the western region, the northern region, you know, and even uh, such processes led to the conduct of a referendum that, uh, you know, set uh, the midwestern region apart from the western region. You know, so it's a, it's a principle that is rooted in a democracy. And uh, even this same definition we are talking about is also uh, democracy, the principles of democracy. Because without democracy, anybody can, you know, uh, declare any territory is and uh, determine how that place will become occupied or who are the ancestral holders of that uh, territory, you know. Uh, and it will not be because it will not be disputed. It is because of the principles of democracy that is why people can dispute it. So, and in making that dispute, you must operate within the uh, template of uh, those conventions and uh, the rule of law. You know, and the and the other tenets of democracy. So, people are saying. Time we got independence together, there were some crises that led to uh, coup and uh, counter coup, and uh, finally a civil war and a pogrom or a genocide that took place. There was a surrender, purported surrender, and so on and so forth. But in spite of all of this, uh, if we want to continue to exist as one political union, there should be uh, a form of consensus among us, for sure, leading to that, or at least a return to the constitutional order that uh, preceded the crisis of 1966, 1967 to 1970. You know, so that is uh, the uh, basis of all the agitations that you have seen. You know, from the Niger Delta end, irrespective of. Uh, the civil, irrespective of the uh, civil, the civil war, the handover, and the rest, they have been agitation by various groups, you know, as their separate ethnic groups and collectively as a region, to insist that they cannot continue to go to a legal system, a constitutional order that is, imposed. you know, so whether it is as the Ogoni, the Ogoni struggle represented by the Ogoni Bill of Rights or the Kayama Declaration, you know, that symbolizes the just struggle or the Oral Declaration or the uh, Biafra Declaration by the Raf Wazurike led Masop and so on and so forth. You know, these are expressions of uh, people insisting that their sovereign power must be you know, recognize and uh, 
no one can lie that they they are sovereignty in the documents that they call the 1999 constitution. And so calling for a renegotiation of the uh, basis of uh, the recognition of the sovereign powers of the individual nationalities, indigenous nationalities that make up uh, this uh, geographical expression. Awesome. Thank you. Sister Augusta, please go ahead. All right, uh, Mr. Marco, we said, I hope you can hear me. Can you? Yes, I can. Okay, so our, our next question, um, in view of the sovereignty issues and questions that you have highlighted as arising from the grievances of the constituent components of Nigeria against the current unitary constitution order, that is the 1999 constitution, can you share with our audience the approach of the Lower Niger Congress and its eminent alliance partners to finding a resolution of these sovereignty issues and questions? And in so doing, can you also share with our audience the disposition of the LNC towards the Biafra restoration agitation, especially against the backdrop of the eight point strategy of the LNC over which it differs almost irreconcilably with the Biafra Restoration Adaptation Bandwagon. Thank you. And I don't have any part of the most society in this apart. Can you say? Can you please repeat it? Can you please repeat it? Okay, of course. Of course, maybe I'll take it one by one. In, in view of the sovereignty issues and questions, that you have highlighted as arising from the grievances of the constituent components of Nigeria against the unitary constitution of the 1999 constitution. Can you share with our audience the approach of the Lower Niger Congress and its eminent alliance partners to finding a resolution of this sovereignty issues and questions? And in so doing, can you also share with our audience the disposition of the LNC towards the Biafran restoration agitation, especially against the backdrop of the eight point strategy of the LNC over which it offers almost irreconcilably with the Biafra restoration agitation bandwagon. Did you hear me now? Yes, yeah, it's a very long question and uh, carrying so many parts along. Good. Uh, I just uh, wish uh, we broke down those questions into uh, one unit to the other so that it's not confusing. Okay, Let, let's do it. Let's do it this way. The uh, uh, um, yeah. go ahead. Can you hear me? So I also, uh, Mas, I mean, Mr. Lisa, you can log in. You can try to log in. I've been able to add you back on. So use that link to log in. I think it's more interactive when our viewers can um, see, see him. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. Okay. Please, can you try once more, uh, Mr. Listen, to log in through Zoom? Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the. The voice is clearer too. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So you should allow him now to join. Yeah. Thank you, audience, for being with us you know we are not perfect in this we are not uh, it people we just doing this because we want what is right for our people so absolutely you know, it's like what he was saying um the issue on ground is sovereignty question mm -hmm. it's not political party issue it's not mm -hmm. apc pdp it's not all those things that people are running around with it's sovereignty and sovereignty belongs to the people. They are the owners of the land. So it's not the politicians, because the politicians are the employees mm -hmm. employed by the people mm -hmm. to manage their resources, which they have done a very bad job. It's obvious to everyone that they've not done a good job. So in normal business, if you employ someone and is mismanaging your resources, destroying your company. Do you still allow him to continue to work for you or you no. fire him immediately? No, you fire him. So that's what we've been trying to tell our people, that sovereignty and power belongs to you. 
Do not send it out to the politicians. Do not even send it out to the freedom fighters, Yahoo Yahoo freedom fighters. It is your responsibility. You will be an irresponsible father, an irresponsible parent, if you cannot secure your land for your children unborn. That is the sad story of Africa. We eat for today and we do not plan for our children unborn. We don't make sure that the ground that we are living, that the country that we are living is safe for the children coming, the mm. generation coming after us. We inherited this land from our forefathers. How come we are not sure that we'll be able to give back this land to the children we are giving back to? And it does not concern us. And we are not worried about it. We are so lackadaisical about it. We are just relaxed. It's okay. I have a friend I was talking to. He said, no. Nigeria will never break. I say, it's not your fault now because you're comfortable. You have established your local government for yourself. You have standby generator that you use a key to turn it on. You have a, a borehole. You have a security door post. You are the local government of yourself. So you have provided all this for yourself and you do not care about my people. It does not concern you that your next door neighbor is unable to eat. It is not your business that a widow is unable to train her children. It does not concern you that our old people are not taken care of. The ones that are sick, then they must die. If you ask them, they say, oh, it's old age. No, the people who have here live up to 90, 100. Since Amuna was telling me about somebody that um, lost the husband, they've been married for 69 years. Marriage. They've been married for 69 years. A time, a lifetime that none of us, a lot of us cannot boast of. We don't even live up to 69. Our people die at 63, 53. But these people have been married in not their own life. It's not the lifespan. It's the lifespan of the marriage. I also had a, a church member. They think they were married for 55 years. And he was saying, if I knew what I knew today, my wife would have still been here. I looked at him and said, anyway, at your age, you're still querying God. Now why should you take your wife that's 70, 80? My people can't even marry for 10 years and they've lost a the husband. They've lost a the wife. If it's not accidents, what will kill you in that Nigeria? In fact, you have more things that will kill you than the things that will not kill you. Mm -hmm. You can easily just go like this. Anything can kill you in Nigeria. Don't we deserve better? Do we not deserve better? If Boko Haram is not killing you, Fulani Hetzman will be killing you. Then if not, the road, the traps they set on the road will get you. Who says that this is the life you should live? And it pains me more when I talk to Christians. Don't you read your Bible? Jesus Christ came to give you the kingdom here on earth. No, you want to die first before you go to the kingdom. You're not reading your Bible very well. He said, I've come to give you life more abundantly. Is the life you're living now the type of life that Christ died for? It cost him his life to get you freedom. Are you enjoying that freedom? All you do is to live and die. Then have nothing for your children. You're not sure what will happen to your children when you're done, when you're gone. As a man, you die. Your wife cannot even manage the children because... So you're the only salary earner. Sister Muna, is he there yet? No. Okay, do we go back to what we're doing before? Yes, let's go back to audio. Apparently he's having challenges. Okay, let me call him again. Sister Muna, can you call direct? Probably it would uh, be better. Okay. If you call him direct on WhatsApp. It would sound clearer from your own end. Yeah. Well, text me his number. Let me do that. Mm. So while we are waiting, while we are waiting for uh, Mr. Mark Olise, I was going through some of the comments that people were writing. Uh, some people are saying we should not depend on the UN. We have said these times without number. UN is not going to come and do whatever for you. UN is not even interested in coming to do anything for you. UN is going to just be there on a supervisory level. 
when it's time for a referendum, they will come and help supervise it. So for those that are saying, oh, you guys are depending on the UN, I don't know, probably you've not been listening to us uh, in our, our past, on our past shows and all that. Um, and those that are saying Fulani will not allow you to change the constitution for the often time, nobody's changing the constitution. We are bringing down the constitution. We've said this over and over that the first major is all about taking down the constitution. Once the constitution is taken down, there will be no, you know, the people that you employ to go work for you will not be there anymore. So just understand that the fact is that you've not come to the realization that these people are working for you. You think that you are working for them. They are working for you. Yeah, in America, if any congressman misbehaves, it gets recorded immediately. Even if they, you all saw when President uh, Trump was, um, they were trying to impeach him. So we, in, in Western world or probably places where demo, real democracy is being practiced, they have the power, the people, we the people have the power to do whatever we want to do. So we've been talking and talking and saying that what we are trying to say about the, Nigeria, the 1999 constitution is that we the people did not write it. We did not write that constitution. This thing was drafted, God knows where, maybe in an hotel or so. We did not draft, we did not write that constitution. We, do not, we did not ask those people to go out there and help us. And those that are saying that you have to deal with your political leaders and all that. The constitution gives your political leaders the power to misbehave. Your political leaders are doing this because the constitution is there. You cannot interrogate them. You cannot audit what they are doing. You cannot ask questions. If you do, you are immediately uh, you know, imprisoned of God knows what. It's because the power has been given by that constitution. So pulling down that constitution, pulling that constitution would make it very, very possible for us to elect the people that we want to be there for us. Remember, these people are being sanctioned by the uh, by the by the cabals. I uh, understand that the Edo uh, state, is it the Edo state? You know, I've not, not been following Nigerian politics lately. One pastor is yeah, in uh, yeah, how to go and wear a turban, how to go mm -hmm. to the north. Just yeah. for them to approve him being the governor of Edo State, I believe that was what it yes, was. Yes, all our governors, they did the same thing. You know, you have to dress to go and get, you know, approval from so from the cabals because that constitution is written in such a way. It's written around them. And yeah, I believe that people, yeah, if, if if you put if you put Jesus Christ as the president, sorry, I have maybe I just want to tell you how terrible that constitution is. You put Jesus Christ as the president of that country because of that cause because he has to go by the constitution. The constitution will be messed up. The constitution will mess him up. So that is why we are not going to do that. So if you put an angel, angel Gabriel, angel Michael, whatever angel, he went at that sea, or whatever sense you put in that, they would that constitution would, would, would mess them up because they had to go by it. So unless the constitution is brought down, there's nothing we can do about that. And those hoping for Igbo presidency, don't forget about it. That's not going to work. That was um good luck. Jonathan, good luck. Was he not there? Jonathan was not even able to fix the road leading to his own village. How much more? It's because the constitution makes it impossible for him to do that. So Jonathan was there for six years or thereabout. Nothing positive came down to the eastern region. You understand? Because that the his hands were tied. The constitution made that impossible for him to do certain things. So unless that constitution is brought down, we will continue to rig my role. We will continue to shout and nothing positive would happen. So we have him in Tisogasa because he's not visual and he's had to listen with the noise in his background. Just read the question one and leave it and then they ask the next one when he's done. Don't combine all of them together. Okay, so maybe that will be easier for him. Okay, he's on. So go ahead. Mr. Lise, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Okay, the first question is that can you share with our audience, okay, the approach of the Lower Niger Congress and its eminent alliance partners to finding a resolution of the sovereignty issues and questions? Because there are sovereignty issues and questions about the 1999 constitution. So can you you know, explain to our people 
the what the LNC and the MNM partners are doing in that regard. Okay, um, the process, uh, the process that we are involved in now started a long time ago. Uh, the most prominent of uh, the activities that we have uh, carried out as an alliance, the MNN uh, partners and our lower, lower Niger Congress, our own regional group, the Lower Niger Congress, you know, started with uh, pro-narco processes uh, where uh, all the indigenous nationalities in Nigeria were mobilized you know, consulted, mobilized to a conference. Uh, that was in 2005. And uh, the People's National Conference was the uh, highlight of that uh, process in which people came for several months October, uh, throughout 2006 and uh, the earlier part of 2007. And that process, you know, uh, was a, like a mock, a mock conference, a mock constitutional conference to show the resolve of the indigenous nationalities of Nigeria to uh, uh, take their destiny in their hands, take back their sovereignty that has been hijacked, hijacked by the uh, coupists of uh, 1966, uh, July 29. And uh, followed by that was a lawsuit challenging the legitimacy of the 1999 constitution in 2007. Uh, our Secretary General, Barista Tony Nadi, Nadi, was the lead counsel in that uh, case. And among those who put their pen to paper, uh, as the people suing the uh, Nigerian state where uh, Yoruba leaders like uh, Bekor and Sonkuti, like uh, Wale Shoinka, uh, Midwestern region leaders like Chief Anthony Nauru, a First Republic uh, Information Minister, and the man who moved the motion for Nigerian independence. You know, then there was uh, Alhaji Mujahi Dokubo Asari, the uh, Niger Delta leader from uh, Joland. Then there was uh, Raf Wazurike representing the uh, those who are clamoring for the restoration of uh, the sovereignty of people of the Old Eastern region. Uh, referred to as the uh, movement for the uh, movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra. Then uh, it was it was like Bishop Bonigi is a renowned uh, Yoruba self damnation campaigner, a, a bishop of note and someone with very large following in the self damnation movement in the Western region. He was uh, a major part of that uh, suit. So the whole process is, you know, communi communi uh, I mean, led to a, a declaration in Lagos, which was the MNN Lagos declaration in uh, 2011, June 30, to be precise. Then uh, we that at the at that uh, regional at that amendment declaration there was an agreement that every uh, member partner members of the of the alliance MNN alliance should go mobilize their region, you know, to repudiate the 1999 constitution and to work out uh, you know charters of agreements between their people on how they want to. Uh, uh, partner in the struggle for self-determination. So these regional solemn assemblies took place. Uh, the one of Port Court was organized by the Lower Niger Congress uh, in 2015, uh, just before the handover of uh, the reign of affairs from uh, Jonathan to Buhari. 
I think that was April 27, to be precise. You know, then uh, there was uh, also the Yoruba people had their own declaration in 2017, two years later, September 7, to be precise, Adama Singba Stadium, Ibadan. Then the Middle Belt had their own in Makodi uh, the next year, 2018. Uh, July 18 was the day of their declaration. You know, so by the by time all the various uh, the three main regions had uh, reached this agreement, you know there was a Freedom Park uh, uh, co uh, conference, which was a coalition of all the representative of the of these three regions met in Lagos Freedom Park and uh, made a proclamation on December 11, uh, 2015. This pro proclamation. Uh, you know, had constitutional force major as the main uh, agreement, the main point that was reached. You know, and uh, this constitutional force major is the activation of the implementation phase of the Freedom Park Proclamation. You know, it should have uh, taken place in the first quarter of uh, this year. But for the pandemic that struck uh, and the lockdown that followed, slowed down because uh, all the agreements are needed to be uh, written down, the text of the declaration, the signatories and the rest, you need to travel all across the country, meet the people, hold meetings and have these signatures. But the lockdown made it uh, impossible for that part of the mobilization to be done. You know, but then adjustments have been made by the leadership of the Alliance for rescheduling the activation of the Constitutional Force Major after the delays imposed by the lockdown. You know, so basically, the, the approach of the Lower Niger Congress you know, uh, has four basic uh, strategic uh, points. And that is where we differ from uh, the bulk of uh, those who are shouting, we want freedom now, now, you know, because there cannot be a revolution without a revolutionary theory. You know, without the uh, articulating a proper war strategy, you cannot win a war, even no matter how mighty your arsenal is. You must have thinkers, you must have strategists, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, programs. Yeah. And that is where we need uh, everybody to buy in, you know. So one of the major points of our strategy, mm -hmm. you know, has to do with, uh, you know, having the exact map of the territory mm -hmm. uh, under the principles of uh, self-determination, this uh, United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, mm -hmm. the that it is the nations themselves that have that right. Yeah. They decide to exercise that right in conjunction with other nations. By that, I mean mm -hmm. that the nations, as a separate political unit, have their own right to self-determination. Robos have their own rights separately from Mijos and from Igbos, have their separate rights of self-determination. So, you know, uh, do the Ibibios, you know, so do the Ibinis, uh, and all the, you know, linguistic nationality groups, you know, in the in our region. So our expressing this right to self-determination together can only be a consequence of an agreement between us to want to express it to us. It is not because, uh, you know, we sat, somebody sat down somewhere and declared that these people in this area were one and the same with them, so we must or we should. That is a tyranny that is not less uh, reprehensible and not less criminal and illegitimate as that of uh, the Nigerian people who decreed the constitution into existence for us and uh, have seized all our political space. 
So to make sure that our our own case is different from theirs, you know, is why we are doing the various mobilizations that I'm talking about. Uh, one of which is uh, having an exact map for the territory, which was a, uh, at the solemn assembly that took place in 2015 in Port Harcourt. We agreed and adopted the, a map for the region. And the map is the ethno-linguistic uh, map of uh, the Lower Niger. The 80, it was uh, a map uh, designed in 1885, showing the uh, connections between people of our region. You know, so with people from the region meeting and agreeing that they want to seek their right to self damnation together, you know, and adopting a map for that purpose, you know, it is one of our strategy and uh, it is something that has, you know, given this process more legitimacy in the eyes of the international community, the United States, and uh, those who back us within the United Nations. Then uh, also, I've talked about the internal question. I've talked about uh, the 18 linguist, 18, uh, 85 linguistic map of the Lower Niger. Then uh, also uh, taking down the 1999 constitution, which is the instrument you know, by which uh, these people tend to give legitimacy to their pillaging of our resources and the occupation of our, of our land. You know, so taking that that uh, constitution is a major strategy for the Lower Niger Congress. Uh, it's similar to what the African National Congress did in South Africa when they insisted that the country can no longer be governed on the basis of the apartheid constitution, being the bulwark and the basis for all of the apartheid uh, laws and apartheid uh, regime that have uh, made life uh, difficult for their people. So taking down the constitution is a very important, uh, you know, strategy for us, you know, and uh, another strategy for us is uh, this MNN alliance that we have put together, uh, getting the nationalities in the Middle Belt and their leaders, and not those in the Southwest, then those from the old uh, Midwestern region, first of all, you know, agreeing to, uh, seek their part to save their nation with those from the old eastern region was the first uh, strategy that the next strategy was getting this our lower niger region to you know be in uh, agreement with those from the western region and those from the middle belt to uh, uh, work towards the dissolution of this union of attrition you know, instead of uh, just uh, wishing that uh, we can just declare secession or declare that our region is not independent of the, you know, Nigeria. So we, our strategy is, is to work towards the dissolution of the of Nigeria itself. You know, so it makes it difficult for those people who were able to put the whole, the rest of the country in alliance against our region. You know, it makes it difficult for them to succeed this time. Now, the rest of the country and be united by our strategy to ostracize those who have already, you know, created a bifurcation with their Sharia declaration, you know, at the early part of this uh, civilian dispensation in Nigeria. You know, so uh, another thing too is that uh, we decided that uh, it would be wrong for us to be adopting uh, a name for the region you know, ahead of when uh, everybody else that is part of the region uh, agrees to what name it should be called. It should be a process of, uh, you know, discussion and the rest, you know, and at the pre-referendum stage, it will be counterproductive to be saying that because there are leaders in these other parts of uh, the region outside the goal and that insists that because of the history and the way, you know, uh, uh, the uh, independent Biafra that was declared in 1907, the way it, it went, the, you know, confusion that came, the surrender that took place, that it will be counterproductive, it will be a wrong strategy to be claiming today that uh, you are seeking independence for, for Biafra uh, and it will not be uniting enough you know, so but so when they get to that point, when we get to that point, 
when we are sure that we have won significant uh, victory in this process and people are now there's a conference or a meeting to decide on what name the new or an independent region or whatever our people decide what will it be called uh, one of the names that will be suggested definitely by people from the lower niger congress will be biafra you know uh, so it depends on which uh, name becomes widely accepted among the people so it's nothing to be emotional about uh, the name you know it's a deliberate strategy and it has really united the people because they already they on their own had their own self-damnation campaign uh, people from Igbo land or from uh, Biafra agitation were not part of the Kayama declaration they did not draft the declaration for the job people that they did, did we declare, draft the declaration for the Ogoni people in their Ogoni Bill of Rights. So there are these nations have their own struggle that have been going on. So if we decide to have a unity of struggle, we cannot come with predetermined or preset uh, mindsets, or uh, you know, to dictate to them what we think uh, it should be. Then uh, the question of terminal processes for concluding the self determination campaign. Uh, referendums as against uh, cataclysm and war, you know, we know it is not easy for a people to go to a uh, civil war twice in a country, considering the, dam the damage that we suffered then, you know, so thinking that the only way we can get freedom must be by war, you know, might not be the best uh, strategy. You know? So having, as I said, you know, philosophical and uh, actual, uh, you know, approach to mobilizing our people and get the international community to buy in into our strategy, you know, uh, in regard for the principles of democracy. Uh, it's also a fundamental part of our strategy, uh, different from those who are saying uh, uh, Biafra or Dex. Uh, now, now, or whatever, just by broadcast. Uh, and this, uh, I'm happy, I think it was yesterday, I saw someone, you know, which could be a reflection of the leadership of uh, those who, uh, who used to be part of, who are, who are part of the Biafra ref, ref, restoration that has refused to embrace our strategy. Because uh, the truth is that the majority of uh, the Biafra restoration groups have actually embraced our strategy. Because uh, Uche Madu led uh, Masob, you know, uh, have uh, long uh, bought into our strategy. Then a uh, significant, let me not be calling this, but a significant portion of those who give uh, energy to the Radio Biafra London led uh, IPOB, you know, have also embraced our strategy and they are working seriously to get, uh, to make uh, what we are doing see the light of the day. You know, so also even uh, the likes of uh, Raf was Right, so right. Major of the realms of affairs right. did not uh, did not shy away from giving him his full support. At least he sent representatives to the pro narco processes that we organized and the uh, MNN. There was this uh, Ifunaya Abraham and Co. You know so that. Uh, were part of those processes. So, Mr. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Then, uh, thank, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, you've made several points. So, thank you. Yes, so I can. Uh, one of the things that he highlighted during his uh, talk was that, you know, that we are, we are doing this thing with the name of lower Congress to give people the opportunity to. Sister Muna, try and be more audible. It's not loud enough. You're not hearing me? Yeah, go ahead, continue. So, uh, yeah, so I said one of the points that he made is that the lower Niger Congress is using that name in order to allow people the opportunity to name their new nation whenever it comes. And he went further to say that, let to him and his group, that the name Biafra also resonates with them. So that people are not misconstrued because they are there yelling Biafra, Biafra, see they are the only one that wants Biafra. They are telling you that because you sit in your village and you have data to comment on Facebook, doesn't mean that you have the, uh, uh, you understand the processes that it will take for you to get there. So to better uh, uh, help your mind, it's time now, you know, because it's like even the Bible says, if you cannot be a child 
all the days of your life. The Bible is taking you some at some point begin to reason as an adult. So we have spent all this time acting like children. Oh, I want my breast milk. I want my pacifier. I want this. Now you have started to a point where you have to go to kindergarten and to take some lessons and take some tests. So let's change our mindset. Like my brother said here, we all want the same thing that he wants. But it does not work by you having a radio ad bus and telling people you, 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 you. Oh, by the way, look at this. I am claiming where I live now as Biafra land. This is it. This is how we are going to name our nation. So whatever you see a random woman with your clothes and this one, then the guy becomes your Biafra. And we're telling you that that's not how it works. So let's stop playing around. Let's stop being emotional. Let's start asking, how can we get this thing that we want? What is viable? What can we do that is likely viable to get us the best results? And you can see, even their so-called, like my brother mentioned earlier, freedom fighting group, they are now saying all the things that we've been lamenting about, the lies, the cheating, the pretense, nothing has been happening. Now they think this is the time to begin the work. And we're telling you that this thing takes for, it takes time. It takes time. It takes time. You know, even school, it takes time. You cannot wake up today and start taking your parental quiz. Now you're a medical doctor. Now you're a lawyer. You must go through that process. And this process that LNC is taking is the best outlook for our people. So his phone, yeah, his phone is okay. Yeah, audio, audio recording. So please grow up, you know, we, before we start our show, we, we emphasize that this show is not for children. If your mind cannot receive where we're going, we appreciate that, you know, stay in your lane. We are looking for people that understand, that are mature enough to understand that we must go through some process to get where we're going to. That it's not something that we can skip a line or be emotional or post a picture of blood everywhere. They, they see all of that and nobody is mentioning your name. So let's do what works. So uh, our brother, we thank you so much for that elaborate uh, discussion. Uh, hopefully our people do understand for those that do want to understand what we're doing here. The purpose of bringing different groups to show that, you know, this is not something you can do you on your own. This is something that you must have alliance. We have shown you guys the alliance map and now we went further to bring people from different territory representing those alliance groups to show that uh, this this uh, strategy is fortified. It's not a one man uh, show. It's not one group show making money off of people's misery. Because when you hear the name Biafra, you will fall apart and uh, start being stupid. Because that's all it does to people now. They are very stupid when they hear the name Biafra. So for us, we are being strategic because the lives of our children uh, depend depend on it. You know, the life of our children depends on it that we get this these things right. Uh, Sister Uki, Sister Boss. I think we can now allow our callers to call if they, right. if we can still get a brolies on the phone. I think we're still on. Um, Mr. Liz, oh, okay, he's not on, I'll call him back. So yeah, so this is the time for phone call. We have posted our information on, the, uh, on our thing. Um, so calling, we had a lot of gap today on our, um, on our thing because of the so we try not to make this thing. There's noise in the background, Sister Muna. Do you know where it's coming from? From um, uh, Yes. Uh, Mr. Mark, please, can you mute your phone? To mute the phone? Yeah, mute your, uh, yeah, mute your own side. And listen to the questions that people would likely ask. Oh, so is it still live? For some reason, my um, this thing here, Google locked me up until it wants to install. Um, is it still on? Because I don't want to click anything. Can you check for me to see if we're still on? We're still on, yeah. Yeah, it's on. 
Google logs me up and say he wants to update. So I'm not seeing the uh, comment section anymore. So this is a good time to call for questions, concerns. Oh, yeah. uh, so we just posted the number there. I can call it out again. Okay. Our meeting ID number is 987 346 and the password is 0032820386906982 and the password is uh, I'm going to also pin it on the wall so that it will be visible for whoever to see and then if you're not expecting any phone calls we just uh, round up uh, and end it for the day so we give them five more minutes. Mr. Mark, do you have anything else to add while we're waiting? You have to, don't forget to unmute yourself. Yeah, you can hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, maybe I was uh, going to add that uh, this uh, the processes I've measured has uh, also given us uh, more acceptance internationally. And uh, I'm sure you people are conversant with the several events, uh, programs that were even at the level of uh, the Washington, uh, I mean, Capitol Hill, the uh, US National Assembly. You know, uh, press conferences uh, at Washington Press Club, International Religious uh, Freedom Ministerial Roundtable, uh, House and Senate states of the House and Senate, the State Department uh, on June, July 2019. Then the U.S. Special Rapporteur was sent to Nigeria, you know, and came out with a report August, uh, September 2019, where he described the uh, the Nigerian constitution as a pressure pressure cooker for injustice. And, uh, you know, you also conversant with uh, President uh, Trump's uh, declaration, you know, uh, his executive order meant to defend the uh, Christians, which is how, how they see us, the indigenous peoples in Nigeria, the indigenous nationalities of Nigeria, they see us as Christians. And uh, they agree that uh, we are being persecuted by the jihadists, you know, with a kind of subtle support from the Nigerian authority. You can remember when the Buhari visited uh, Washington last, uh, he told him there at their uh, presidential press briefing that uh, the, the, he has to do more to protect Christians in Nigeria. Yeah. And uh, it was interpreted to mean that uh, the U.S. was going to, you know, uh, take steps to protect civilians in Nigeria if uh, the Nigerian authorities refused to do enough. And uh, we are not uh, oblivious of the moves that have been made to uh, appoint a special, uh, a special uh, representative, or what do you call them, uh, a special envoy, yeah to appoint a special envoy for Nigeria and the Sahel to counter uh, the jihadists represented by the headsmen, uh, the ethnic militants, Fulani ethnic militants and, uh, and their headsmen, then the Boko Haram and the Islamic State in West Africa. So even the last uh, warning given to Nigeria by the U.S. that uh, ISIS uh, operatives were uh, getting entrance into the country from the Northwest is still in forefront of uh, the White House and the Capitol Hill with the need to support uh, our cause, you know. So I said, let me point that out. Then another one too is that uh, all of what we are doing, you know, who have been broken down into percentage in terms of uh, importance, you know, and the most, the heaviest of it is about like three quarter of the tax to be done. 
let's say seventy five percent, and that is taking down this uh, apartheid-like constitution, this uh, caliphate imposed constitution. Just as I mentioned earlier, just as the ANC and the black majority in South Africa, you know, ended the uh, white Boer uh, uh, African imposed apartheid uh, constitution, you know, so having that. It's uh, a major part of what we are doing. This MNM declaration, legal declaration, and all of all the events I listed, which were done without uh, having to be insulted anybody on radio, TV, on the internet, and the rest. But actually going down to work, applying intelligence and tact, mobilizing people, getting uh, all these regions who were all in alliance against our region, getting all of them to agree that we have more in common than the other people and that we are all endangered at this point in time and that we, it will be better for us to seek our same intervention same, same path you know, together. You know, so all of all these processes that we have done, you know, that has that culminated in the uh, force major that will be declared uh, in a matter of weeks from now. All of this from the bulk, three quarters or seventy five percent of the tax to be done. All other processes are just like maybe five five percent. In and I can assure you that the, even the process of sensitization, the process of sensitization and mobilization for people to participate in the referendum to vote yes, you know, to the question when it is thrown in a referendum is just five percent of the tax. And that is where all the noise you hear, whether people are, you know, are doing sit at home, people are protesting, people are broadcasting on Radio Biafra London or uh, from Okwe, as the case may be. All of this process of having to speak to our people, get our people charged, excited, it's just 5%. You know, other, other, other tax that are also, you know, about the same range with that are, uh, or the same percentage or ratio with that, you know, is include creating internal coercion within the constituent ethnic components, you know, which uh, the solemn assembly and all of those other, and uh, this charter of relationship, because we are already finalizing on having a formal document that is uh, agreed to and signed by all these nationalities within our region that are said on their own, they are recognized to have a right to pursue their own self damnation path, independent of the rest. But I've chosen, for the purpose of coercion and strength, I've chosen to unite, you know, to push, to, to pursue this path together. Having them to put it on paper, because all of this chapter of relationship are things you will submit to the UN and all of the international agencies that will back, you know, our call for a referendum. You know, so getting that a chart of relationship, putting it together is like five percent. Then another five percent will be uh, this creating this multi-region alliance that I'm talking about. You know, to put to isolate the Sharia territory. Then another five percent will be you know the international outreach, like all those ones that I mentioned, the ministerial roundtables, and you know getting the White House and the rest to. Uh, buying into what we are doing as seeds as having a link with their own strategic national interests, their national security concern in terms of having to defeat ISIS and preventing uh, foreign terrorists from uh, being able to strike home their homeland or being able to uh, radicalize their own people. You know, so if we are being uh, threatened by their own, we have a common enemy in the jihadists who have been threatened by their own enemies. You know, it is strategic that they unite with us to defeat uh, those people. Thank you, Mr. Martin. So, you call and, um, please introduce yourself and where you're. Um, okay, we have a video. Yeah. We have a contributor. Your name and where you're calling from. Okay, it's time to connect to audio. Uh, I'm just having an audio issue there. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Martin. It seems to me that, like you said, most of the jobs uh, 
has been completed, you know. So we just have to run it up just to complete the rest. And so we are so fortunate that we are not bamboozled into donating money while the uh, majority of the work was being completed. So this is the time now for people to wake up and say, how can I be part of this great process? And check the process out before you invest your time, invest your energy or your resources or whatever, and see if it makes sense to you and ask some intelligent questions. So our guest is our contributor who is having problems connecting to audio, teaching connecting to audio. I'm not sure he's going to fully connect the audio. But what I can do at this point is to probably post our take home points. We have started to post a take home point every day after our show so that people can begin to understand. We talk a lot, we talk a lot uh, about different issues so that at the end of the day, we say this is the, the, the information that I got out of this uh, today's show. And let that sound in your mind, and you know, you can share that information with people. So, I'm going to. Uh, yeah, so Raymond is still having issues uh, connecting. So, today I'm going to post the quick one point I used to read uh, while we're waiting for one get the one one get it to uh, in. Um, Sister Mona, before you do that, do we have any other person that wants to connect while we are waiting for? Uh, Father Raymond to connect. Do, do we have somebody else that is trying to connect? Okay. And uh, let's allow uh, Mr. Olise, if he's not talking, he can mute his phone to lessen the noise on the background. Please, please, can you mute your phone? Okay, okay thank you. Yeah. Should I talk or I should mute? Yeah, please mute, mute your phone and let's see uh, if they ask questions, then you cannot mute. Okay. Okay. All right. So I have you for audio directly on the mic. That's why it's so noisy. All right. So I'm going to, okay. So I'll get your uh, contributor here is still trying to log in. So let me share this screen so that uh, those who can um, give you guys some more distance on this. People are saying we should talk louder. Uh, we should talk louder. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. that those who can go ahead and give us a uh, uh, talk on our take home plans for today. Thank you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I thought somebody was in with question. No, he's uh, trying to log in. We don't know if he's going to log in. He keeps saying uh, or the connection to audio. Okay. So, um, take home point, like my sister said, we want to gather our thoughts together and say, okay, this is what we want you to be thinking. The, um, we cannot wait for the political class to give us back our sovereignty, which they stole, our mandate, they stole it. We have to take it back by ourselves. And that's why we're talking about constitutional force major. It means through which you can take back what belongs to you. You cannot wait for the political class. The political class are more interested in muzzling the people so that they can continue to steal but that's just postponing the evil days. That is why the Southern uh, politicians are conniving with the Fulani Caliphate killers. And they should know that their days are numbered. The rejection of devaluation of power in both Senate and House of Representatives is an outright indication that the people cannot trust the political class. They cannot trust them to represent them adequately because this is so simple and straightforward. For them to have rejected it, it means that they do not have your interest at heart. They do not care whether you're killed or not. So far they keep smiling to the bank, sharing their loots. So when it comes to stealing from Nigeria, the Southern politicians, the Northern politicians, all of them come together and agree as one and defraud us, steal our money, share among themselves. So we cannot wait for them. Power belongs to the people. That's the summary of what we And you have to arise 
and do the needful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that take home point. So brothers and sisters, I think we may have to call it a day. Uh, that brother was not able to get in. I think he was having connecting issues. That was the thing with the uh, Wi-Fi. So thank you, uh, our viewers, for joining us today, despite our uh, technical difficulties today. Uh, you hung on there and, and tried to work with us. So we thank you so much. We just want people to understand that all we want is for this self-determination to be done. We just we want this more than we want life because this is our lives really. This is this is what would determine if we live or die. So we want this just like we need you know we need this more than we, we need oxygen. So please let's do our uh, do our due due process or due diligence. We look at the information. Go to their website, the Lower Niger Congress. There's plenty of uh, videos on uh, um, YouTube. The thing here is for you to understand the process so that you're not asking questions or addressing concerns from a place of ignorance. So when you watch this video and you begin to understand what this process is, even our video on Daughters of Truth, we treated this information from way back uh, uh, from, like we said, the UN uh, Declaration of uh, People's Rights. For us to understand this is what needs to be done, this is how, well, this is what is so called international. You can't do this on your own. Because it is possible that uh, I can't think of the name of the country in Spain that wanted to break off and just get up and say, oh, let's scream long enough, they will break us off. No, you have to go through the process. And luckily, we are not the only, the first person that took, uh, uh, that benefited from that UN um, Declaration of uh, Human Rights and how things are supposed to be done. Other people have used it to get to their freedom. The problem is that half of us is uh, they are confused about how to get the process. They don't want to learn because they figure that only a, an emergency ad boss on the radio will get them that uh, Biafra. So saying, let's, you know, like our brothers and sisters are doing in Yoruba line, they are saying this thing makes sense. They are bringing their techno technocrats, they are bringing their scientists, they are bringing their lawyers, they are bringing their uh, learned people that understand how these things work. Because if you are hiding in, in the darkness and posting and calling us names, you will never, you're not part of the UN. You can't even, you don't even light. You're in darkness already. You don't even have light to converse with us in a meaningful way. So we need those people that are there because we keep telling you guys, even when these people with all the evil Obasanjo committed in our land, when they come to talk to people, they still go to Obasanjo. Doesn't that tell you something? They're the one that killed us. Go on. They're the one that are flying all over the world. They, you know, have mansions everywhere. Nobody's stopping them. When they come to discuss the affairs of the country, they go back to them. So what does that tell you? You can't call them names. What you need to do is to go and find a way to ally yourself with whoever you need to ally yourself with so you can get yourself out of the mess that you find yourself in. So join us next week um, during our next show. So, so Augusta, do you have any closing statements? And then we'll have Mark we'll say, say his final statement so we can go. Yeah, uh, we just want to thank everybody that tuned in today. You know, um, you know, <laughs> uh, this technology self, <laughs> but we're going to get there because we are really, really working hard. You know, to making things work smoothly. So for those that are hard of hearing, uh, I don't know. You may just have to check with your doctor to help you out on that. And uh, for those that understand where we are going to and where we are coming from, we say, hey, we are almost there. So we wish everybody would support the LNC. The LNC is the pathway. The Southwestern people, they have taken that, the Yorubas, they took the same template. They worked on the same template. And so far they are moving steadily. Nobody even knows the extent that they've gone. They have their motekun, they have the, they have their caucus. Everybody is, you know, in tune with what is going on. And there is no noise. Nobody is going on the radio to shout and scream and talk about how Buari's um, um, wife has a boyfriend and all that thing, so unrelated to the, the, the Biafra that you're looking for. So we are telling our people, you know, as um, Mr. Marcolis has said, he said when it comes to naming the nation, that even the South South people, the Niger, the Niger Delta people, also have the name Biafra at the back of their minds. Like somebody was asking, what would the name be eventually? Everybody will have to agree on what the name would be. There's going to be like an internal referendum where we would agree on what this name would be. So it's not one man sitting down there saying, hey, 
if you are tying double wrapper as ah, sister Mona and I tied double wrapper today. I must even show you guys. You see the double wrapper that I tied. Sorry, you have to go through that. Uh -huh. It means that me staying here in my house in Richmond, tying double wrapper means that Richmond is Biafra. I will try to explain this. It doesn't it's not logical. It doesn't make sense. That is not what you will present to the United Nations. United Nations wants to see a map, wants to see a map that shows the territory, the main place that you're talking about. United Nations wants to see that map. So if you are not presenting something, graphical thing to show exactly where the area, the territory, you, you just have to show something. So we have tried to let our people understand this. We have spoken in languages that they would understand. We have broken down the LNC um, pathway, the LNC road map. We have broken it down in such a way that our people would understand. So if you're hard of hearing, there's nothing we can do. But probably you need deliverance. Uh, that's the most I can say. But if not, you have to understand that the LNC pathway is the pathway that will lead us to our own self-determination. And for those that are shouting that the Fulani will not allow you to pull the Constitution down, guess what? We are the new majority because there is an MNN alliance, alliance with the Southwest, alliance with the middle belt so we had the new we are the new majority we have the new majority right now so it doesn't depend on the Fulanese. it does not depend on the cabals the um i can't remember when the middle belters said that they are no longer northerners there was time they came out and declared that do not classify them anymore as northerners that they are not middle belters so that's to send a message to you that we now have a new majority the only state, the 12 states, the 12 contiguous states, or the, the northern, northern state, the Sharia state, they, those people have even moved out of Nigeria, if, in case you don't understand. They are only eating out of the money coming from the uh, uh, south, southern region. So we, we don't know how best we can make you all understand that this is the pathway, pathway that would not involve any bloodshed. The only other pathway that your leader or whatever may be telling you is to push you towards your death. So when will you enjoy that Biafra if you, if you die first? How would you enjoy that? So please, our people, you just calm down. Calm down, calm down. As one little boy will say, say, mommy, calm down. Calm down, calm down, and listen to what we are trying to say. And it's for your own benefit. As I said before, the Southwest Yoruba people, they, have, they, they saw that template and they moved with it swiftly. Wow. They did. They didn't ask for it. They, they saw the template. They read it. They looked at it critically. They brought in all their, all their lawyers, all their uh, people from everywhere. They said, come and read this thing. They come, this thing makes a lot of sense. And guess what? They are moving steadily, steadily, steadily. Nobody's asking. Nobody's even intimidating them because they have their own. They, they've wrapped their own uh, 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 freedom. They've wrapped it. And they're about to move. So it's time for our people to also sit back and understand that this is for us. It is for us. We the people. It is we the people, not one politician or one one full and cabal. Thank you very much for listening today and hope next week is gonna be better. We would uh, get a technical thing going on by next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Mark, please just say goodbye so that we don't we don't think you're gone. Or meet yourself and just end it for us. Yeah, um, it has been a great day and uh, spite of the technical issues, which is a reflection of uh, the weakness of uh, Nigeria, you know, how life has uh, been made more difficult by the kind of poor leadership that a malfunctioned state and uh, a malorganized uh, state like Nigeria can uh, only offer, you know, so that I call on our people to get uh, ready to throw their weight fully behind the constitutional force major when it is uh, finally declared. Uh, the, cons the constitutional force major is simply in furtherance of the series of people's actions and democratic processes, which I listed earlier, that... Uh, the Lower Niger Congress and the Secretariat of the Alliance has been stimulating and guiding, you know, for about two decades now. And uh, this uh, consular force major 
you know, uh, is one that our people uh, should organize, you know, and take very seriously, not uh, like the way they have been, uh, you know, running after those who are insulting people and thinking that, uh, you know, that is the way to go because uh, it's easy to appeal to people's emotion, but emotional masturbation, as uh, a friend of mine would choose to refer to it, you know, is not going to bring freedom. Freedom comes by struggle, and every struggle must have a revolutionary theory, idea, you know, and the strategy behind it, you know, uh, the mobilization for that referendum, everybody will find a space for expression, all the groups that have been shouting freedom, freedom, freedom. Of course, very, very important that they are playing those roles, but we should not play destructive roles like trying to, you know, distract people from genuine processes. You can still do your broadcasts on Radio uh, Biafra London, without uh, you know having to now be a stumbling block to the movement or people declare yourself a leader of a process that you are you are not part of you know by insulting people and the rest you know even fella was popular for insulting people there are several people who have become popular you know from uh, insulting those who have mismanaged nigeria so it is not uh, the popularity contest it's not about how much insult you know, I'm happy when I saw someone yesterday who is part of the leadership of uh, the Radio Biafra London. I assume that uh, that might reflect uh, the thinking of a large uh, portion of them now, said that uh, they set out to sensitize the people, that that was the purpose for setting up the radio. You know, that uh, now they think it's time to, you know, consult all of the things that we have been doing since and so on, that it's time to consult. I think uh, we need to do something that will actually lead. So they have owned up that they were actually not doing anything that was going to lead, Whoa. you know, to the process. And I think uh, for those who uh, still having huge hope that uh, something big is going to happen to them, they should uh, walk back, uh, you know, their steps and uh, embrace this uh, process. You know, for some, the only role they might play would be to be available to go and vote yes in a referendum. Right. You know, then uh, for some, they will do that and uh, support with material, you know, possessions of theirs. Some they will do by enlightening people. You know, we welcome all uh, all approaches, and uh, we should uh, not allow bad blood to derail us from uh, pursuing our path to freedom. Okay.